What's an algorithm? In computer science, an algorithm is a set of instructions for solving some problem, step by step. Typically, algorithms are executed by computers, but we humans have algorithms as well. For instance, how would you go about counting the number of people in a room? Well, if you're like me, you'd probably point at each person, one at a time, and count up from zero. One, two, three, four, and so forth. Well, that's an algorithm. In fact, let's try to express it a bit more formally in pseudocode, English-like syntax that resembles a programming language. Let n equal zero. For each person in room, set n equal to n plus one. How to interpret this pseudocode? Well, line one declares, so to speak, a variable called n and initializes its value to zero. This just means that at the beginning of our algorithm, the thing with which we're counting has a value of zero. After all, before we start counting, we haven't counted anything yet. Calling this variable n is just a convention. I could have called it most anything. Now, line two demarks the start of a loop, a sequence of steps that will repeat some number of times. So in our example, the step we're taking is counting people in the room. Beneath line two is line three, which describes exactly how we'll go about counting. The indentation implies that it's line three that will repeat. So what the pseudocode is saying is that after starting at zero, for each person in the room, we'll increase n by one. Now, is this algorithm correct? Well, let's bang on it a bit. Does it work if there are two people in the room? Let's see. In line one, we initialize n to zero. For each of these two people, we then increment n by one. So on the first trip through the loop, we update n from zero to one. On the second trip through that same loop, we update n from one to two. And so by this algorithm's end, n is two, which indeed matches the number of people in the room. So far, so good. How about a corner case though? Suppose that there are zero people in the room, besides me, who's doing the counting. In line one, we again initialize n to zero. This time though, line three doesn't execute at all, since there isn't a person in the room, and so n remains zero, which indeed matches the number of people in the room. Pretty simple, right? But counting people one at a time is pretty inefficient too, no? Surely we can do better. Why not count two people at a time? Instead of counting one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and so forth, why not count two, four, six, eight, and so on? It even sounds faster, and it surely is. Let's express this optimization in pseudocode. Let n equal zero. For each pair of people in room, set n equal to n plus two. Pretty simple change, right? Rather than count people one at a time, we instead count them two at a time. This algorithm does twice as fast as the last. But is it correct? Let's see. Does it work if there are two people in the room? In line one, we initialize n to zero. For that one pair of people, we then increment n by two. And so by this algorithm's end, n is two, which indeed matches the number of people in the room. Suppose next that there are zero people in the room. In line one, we initialize n to zero. As before, line three doesn't execute at all since there aren't any pairs of people in the room. And so n remains zero, which indeed matches the number of people in the room. But what if there are three people in the room? How does this algorithm fare? Let's see. In line one, we initialize n to zero. For a pair of those people, we then increment n by two, but then what? There isn't another full pair of people in the room, so line two no longer applies. And so by this algorithm's end, n is still two, which isn't correct. Indeed, this algorithm said to be buggy because it has a mistake. Let's redress with some new pseudocode. Let n equal zero. For each pair of people in room, set n equal to n plus two. If one person remains unpaired, set n equal to n plus one. To solve this particular problem, we've introduced in line four a condition, otherwise known as a branch, that only executes if there's one person we could not pair with another. And so now, whether there's one or three or any odd number of people in the room, this algorithm will now count them. Can we do even better? Well, we could count in threes or fours or even fives and tens, but beyond that, it's going to get a little bit difficult to point. At the end of the day, whether executed by computers or humans, algorithms are just a set of instructions with which to solve problems. These were just three. What problem would you solve with an algorithm?